ready. Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. The entire Jen Shaw situation is crazy to me because y'all not been watching The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City from day one. From First season, they're on the third season now. I just finished the third season two nights ago. And so over the weekend, we got the announcement that Jen Shaw was sentenced to six years. Let me go ahead and play this real quick here. Give me just a second. Now, I feel like, I, I don't know. I, I refuse to believe that Coach Shaw just, he, he, he knew nothing. He just knew nothing. I don't know. I refuse to believe that. But let's go ahead and listen. And that sentencing of Jen Shaw, the real housewife getting six and a half years in prison for her role in orchestrating a fraud scheme. ABC's Aaron Katursky is back again. You were in the courtroom for this, Aaron. I was in the courtroom and I'm not sure the judge necessarily believed her, but far from the combative character seen on reality television, Jennifer Shaw presented herself in court, Janae, as contrite remorseful, even prepared to make amends for ruining the lives of thousands of elderly victims. This morning, Jen Shaw is waiting to learn in which federal prison she'll have to spend the next six and a half years. She left court wearing sunglasses after tearfully apologizing. My actions, she said, have hurt innocent people. I was devastated. I was so ashamed because I thought I was a smarter person than that. Shaw played a leading role in a long-running telemarketing fraud that convinced elderly, vulnerable women to buy services that serve no purpose. Victims lost everything. She made millions. People are wondering, like, how'd you get so rich? I mean, I run a lot of different companies and businesses. On The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, Shaw can seem abrasive. Do you know how scared I am? Or dismissive. The only thing I'm guilty of is being Shaw amazing. In court, Shaw said her signature tagline was written for her. Reality TV, she said, has nothing to do with reality. The harm victims said they suffered from Shaw's telemarketing fraud, though, was all too real. Their lives, prosecutors said, have turned upside down. If I can talk to the people that scam me, I would say, would you do this to your mother? To your sister? And why? Why would you do this? When Shaw promised to repay every cent, the judge interrupted to ask how. Shaw said she would use her platform to raise money, and she pledged to turn over royalties from future Real Housewives episodes. But she said she stopped selling Justice for Jen merchandise. Proceeds from earlier sales she pledged to save for victims. Shaw is on the hook for more than $6 million in restitution, another $6.5 million in forfeiture. Plus, she has to give up all the luxury goods she bought with other people's money. She must report to prison by mid-February. And Janae, she wants to go to a minimum security prison in Bryan, Texas, same place Elizabeth Holmes of Theranos fame wants to spend her prison time, Janae. Wow, but she says that she will try to find a way to pay all that back. All right, Aaron, thank you. Whoo! Now... A lot of things with that whole situation is really bothersome because Jen not only proclaimed her innocence from day one. I mean, she was like anybody who even thought otherwise, she would gaslight the other lady. She'd make you feel like you were a bad friend or a bad viewer forever questioning her. <clears throat> and this is why I always say that it doesn't make any sense to envy anybody or to, you know, to be, to be jealous of anyone because you never know how people obtain their wealth. Now, when they first came on the show, she was over the top. They were living in this huge ski chalet, 9,000 square feet, beautiful home. <clears throat> she was throwing parties for her friends. You know, you saw her sons, you know, really, you know, adorable um, boys. Uh, she has like a 16-year-old and like a 25-year-old. He's going to be a doctor, supposedly. 
And then she had, you know, her husband, Coach Shaw, and they seemed like this perfect family. She had the, remember, she had the whole Shaw squad, and she had all these people at her beck and call doing her hair, her makeup. She had all these luxury items. And it's almost like we, we watch these shows and we think to ourselves, like, damn, what are we doing wrong in life? Why am I not living this trife life? Why, why don't I have a whole T squad? I get tired of doing all this shit myself. You know, and then when you really start to like peel back the onions and you realize it was just a facade. They were only able to live that lifestyle because they were scheming and scamming. <clears throat> For so long, this lady was going around saying that she wasn't guilty. She was set up by her best friend, Stuart. Um, you know, that this was his plan. And the fact that this had been going on for 10 years. And like I always say, you know, when the feds are watching, they don't pounce until they have rock solid evidence because <clears throat> it's going to end up in a conviction rate. But she's swapping down. She was not guilty. She was going to fight it. And so when she pled guilty back in July, I was really shocked to hear her plead guilty because she's swapping down. She hadn't done anything wrong. But Obviously, there was a lot more proof that if she wouldn't have pled guilty, she'd been looking at close to 20 years in prison. So it made sense for her to plead guilty and try and get lesser time, but she still got six years. I refuse to believe. As much as I love Coach Shaw, he seems like a good Muslim man. Um, I refuse to believe that he didn't know what was going on. I refuse to believe that she's been running this scam for 10 years. And granted, he's gone a lot. He's coaching, you know, college football. And I know that can keep you busy. But at some point in time, as husband and wife, you guys are sharing financial information. And you have to ask yourself, how is she able to make this much money? He was only making like, I want to say... He makes like 500000 a year from what they were saying. And that might be from other investments and stuff. But she was making millions a year. So how did she go from making a few hundred thousand a year to being a multimillionaire in, in such a short amount of time? And he just supposedly had no idea. But there were text messages that came out and they were saying that... um that she was texting him and because he was also a lawyer at one point and he was saying that if, 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 and if they got questioned by the feds he was going to write up something for her and Stewart to say so i think he was aware another thing that i found funny is that they were saying that she was also cheating <laughs> and the feds brought that up in court to show her character is not as innocent as she's trying to make it seem that she was cheating on Coach Shaw. So she has some side dig. The feds brought that up in court and they ended up contacting her side peen, sorry, can't use that word, uh, his wife. So the side peen's wife found out. This was a messy court case. Then on top of that, half her bags and stuff in her closet weren't real. You can't make this stuff up. The lady who's like literally everything in her closet is beautiful and organized and luxurious. They went to try to sell her stuff, her Louis and her Gucci's counterfeit. So again, people be just faking shit and it don't even be real. And there's nothing wrong. You know what I'm saying? If you want to get a knockoff bag or a counterfeit bag, hell, some of them look just as good as the original. I don't knock what nobody gets. But then why are you trying to act like everybody else is so broke and they're so down here and you're so rich, but you're rocking fake bags too, like a person who works at damn Target. So I, I don't know. I just I was just really like shocked. I was just like really, really shocked at like just all this stuff that's come out. And it just goes to show that you shouldn't really envy anybody. And a lot of these shows are so fake. A lot of it is just people faking it until they make it. Like if you really watch a lot of these shows, when they start, go and watch the first season of any Real Housewives show. I don't care if it's Atlanta, if it's Salt Lake. And, you, and I think the later shows like Salt Lake, they have a blueprint, right? So they're kind of coming in glamorous and wearing their Balenciaga and their, you know, Givenchy and all that shit. So they're, they're kind of already low-key. They kind of have a blueprint. 
But remember, the first season of Real Housewives of Atlanta, Nene and Greg, <laughs> they were renting out that home. And then the, they found out that, remember the news? Let me see if I can find it. The news went uh, out to their town home to go confront them. You know, and Greg ended up slamming the, the door in their face. I don't know if y'all ever saw that. Let me see if I can find it. It's on YouTube somewhere. The news came out to their home to kind of call them out. Here it is from 11 years ago. I don't forget shit, y'all. Why do I remember the most irrelevant stuff? Get out my head. I should not remember this. But since I do, we're going to watch it together. This is, and you see where Nene, you know, as the years went on, oh, I'm rich, bitch, and I'm, I'm cashing Trump checks. So it's all this whole fake it till you make it. And I'm not mad because I, I get how the game goes. But this is why people need to stop living vicariously through others. So we're going to watch this together. The Fox team investigate. Well, the reality TV series The Real Housewives of Atlanta is a hit. And one of its biggest stars is the bigger than life NeNe Leakes. But the I-team takes a look at what is real about their reality series and what is it. Dana's here now. Dana? Well, I'll tell you, a lot has been made, as you know, about the leaks and the status of their TV home. But the IT finds that's not the only financial woe the stars are battling. The Real Housewives of Atlanta. If it doesn't make me money, I don't do it. It's a reality TV show that takes viewers into the homes and lives of some of Atlanta's well-to-do. People are intimidated by my success. It's about people who live in homes like this, wives with chefs, ladies who get massages whenever they want. And the biggest housewife personality to jump off of the screen is the tangy-tongued Nene Leakes. I don't keep up with the Joneses. I am the Joneses. On the Bravo Network series, Nene Leakes lives here in this upscale Sugarloaf subdivision with her husband, Greg. Viewers ride along when the Leakes buy their teenage son this $42,000 truck. And your girl, I will be wearing diamonds as well. Where do Nene and Greg Leakes get all of this money? The show's online bio says Greg Leakes is a successful real estate investor and business consultant. Nene, whose real name is Lanethia, runs a charity. Fans love her for her what you see is what you get attitude. I don't like to pretend. But that's exactly what some people say the leaks are doing. <laughs> Pretending. <laughs> Real estate records show that Nene and Greg Leakes don't own this luxury home. In fact, they don't even live here anymore. The reality is this, that Greg Leakes owes a lot of people a lot of money. Their TV home on the reality show was really a rental. And according to court records, a judge ordered their eviction on October 13th for not paying rent. Late today, a lawyer for the Leakes told us the court set aside the writ of possession and dismissed the case. But there's more money problems, a whopping $100,000 in tax liens against Mr. Leakes for unpaid taxes. Come on. Okay, let me stop. <laughs> why do I remember shit like that? I do not know why. I have like a whole, I don't, I don't forget shit. But I was playing that just to show y'all, like even the Fox News in Atlanta was investigating because when this show came out, it had a lot of people like, well, who are these people that they're making all this money? We've never heard of them. They're not really in the Atlanta social circles, but that's what they were doing. They were faking it till they made it. Because I remember when that's, yeah, a lot of y'all remember that when that came out. A lot of people remember that when that came out years ago, they were investigating them. So once she renewed for a second and a third season, you know, as you renew, you get more and more money. Remember the same thing with Teresa and Joe Judice. Remember the first season, everybody looks kind of ashy and dusty. And, and some of it was, you know, the film quality back in 2007. But if you go back and watch some old clips, remember they were building that house. Oh, I would never have a home with a used bathtub. I would never use a used bathtub. And, you know, she was over there buying like $30,000 worth of furniture. And remember, Joe kept paying in cash. He was like, where the fuck is he just getting $30,000 worth of cash from? Like, you can't just walk around with $30,000 worth of cash. Everything we're buying, he was just cash, cash. <laughs> Y'all want me to play the rest? I don't, it's, it's long. I think it's like, no, it's six minutes. Now, we now, you got, you go ahead to watch the rest. It's six minutes long. But 
I was just showing y'all that a lot of times these people are faking it till they make it. And then once they start getting money in, you know what I'm saying? Now they're able to kind of cover their debts and then buy a house. You notice as the seasons go on, the houses get bigger. The egos get bigger. You know what I'm saying? The cars get bigger. Remember when Kenya Moore first came on The Real Housewives, she had a white refrigerator. And now she got that beautiful home. She has a Bentley. So I, I think a lot of it is, listen, I said T's a time capsule. I really am, Chad. I really am. So I think a lot of it is pressure. But what is unfortunate is that a lot of young people, and this is what I've been noticing. We had a meeting the other day on Discord where a lot of young people are seeing things like this and they're comparing themselves. And what I'm finding out, you know, and I, I've even talked to young people in my personal life, is that I'm noticing there's this whole phenomenon. Oh, yeah, the asses get bigger, too. Thank you, uh, Petty Cat. Don't forget that. Remember, Cynthia had no ass. Now she looks like a damn uh, Instagram model. <laughs> yes, the asses, new titties, all that stuff. You know, the plastic surgery, yes, all that comes with it. But what I've noticed is that there's a lot of young people who are now feeling like they're old. I had a young girl call into our meeting the other day and she was saying like, you know, she just feels like she's old. She's trying to figure out her life, you know, what she should do. And so I'm like, you know, well, how old are you? 21. 21. You haven't even lived yet. What do you like? Why do y'all think y'all are old at 21? And I came to the conclusion that a lot of y'all are feeling like y'all are old and y'all haven't accomplished anything because you guys are so busy watching faulty lifestyles. Y'all are watching reality TV stars, influencers. You guys are being raised to watch people who are, I'm 25 and I'm a multimillionaire. And I did this in three years. What are you doing with your life? But what you guys are not understanding is that those are diamonds in the rough. Those are the anomalies. That's not how life normally works. The average 21-year-old is like you. They're struggling to figure out life. They're struggling with, with what they want to do in life, what school they want to go to, what jobs do they want to you know, try and obtain. The average 21-year-old is not a multimillionaire. I was broke at 21. I was living paycheck to paycheck and raising a child. That's more average than the average 22, 23-year-old on social media telling that, you, that you're not shit if you don't have a certain amount of wealth. And I think that's why a lot of these young people are feeling like they're old and like their clock is ticking because they haven't reached a certain or obtained a certain status. And I think we have to get back to reality, you know? And it's not just young people, right? Because Jen Shaw is old. She's in like, you know, what, late 50s. Older, not old, but older. And look how much she had to fake in front for reality television. Imagine if she never went on reality TV. She probably could have kept scamming in peace, okay, and lived her life. But we live in a day and age where it's more important to be famous and have face recognition and have fame than even the money. You know, I think that's the part that's sad. You have a lot of these influencers who kind of, they kind of project this lifestyle, right? Especially the financial, because I, I watch a lot of people in the financial sector and you'll see them giving this advice, you know, about buying real estate and Airbnb and, you know, buy my courses and a lot of this stuff. And I'm not knocking anybody's hustle, but if you just take the time out to do your own research, you really don't have to buy or pay for a $500 class. And so you guys are looking at these people like they're so rich, but they're not necessarily rich because they're entrepreneurs. They're rich because they're grifting, because they're selling classes. If you guys don't buy their $500 class, guess what? They're no longer rich like that. So when I see people giving advice like, okay, you need to go get an Airbnb and flip it and this and that. Yes, that was a reliable source of income for a while, but even that market is starting to dry down. But the difference is when they take their money and they're able to go buy multiple rental properties or Airbnbs, you have to understand their nest egg is YouTube. 
So if they make a financial mistake, they still have money coming in from the YouTube revenue, podcast, merchandise. Whereas if you do the same thing, you don't have extra revenue. So you have to be really smart with who you follow and stop following people who are selling you an illusion, like the Jen Shaws of the world and things like that. So I just wish that people... Child, look, Katie, we're not going to even talk about uh, let's uh, meet Kevin. It, it's a bunch of them. And it's just it's it's really sad because it's like you can afford to give this weird ass advice. You know, I'm grown. So I see through the nonsense. You know, what I mean, money's not made like that. You, you're not money's just not made overnight that quick. And whatever you invest in, whatever you put money into, you have to put work into it. You know, and so a lot of stuff is very passive. The only thing that can be pretty tangible is real estate. But even then, you still have to put a lot of money and work into the real estate because sometimes you got to pay to clean the property and update the property and things like that. But, yeah, it's just it's just really sad that you just have a lot of people like Jen Shah and others who are pushed on reality television, but they really don't have it like that. And I, I really don't even think that most of the cast on The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, I don't think a lot of them have it like that. Like, all their businesses seem shady. They're all throwing darts at each other. Whitney's husband lost his job of seven years. Um, the one, who's the one with the, Lisa, with the raspy voice, they're always throwing shots at her liquor line that it's not really successful. I think a lot of these people are just renting homes and, you know, trying to expose their lies because they figure that's the check to get, you know? So you just gotta be really wary of stuff like that. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.